Hey, what's up everybody? This is CJ Johnson and welcome to another Fresh Clean Teas Roundtable. This time we're going to be getting into some really dope styling tips and some health wellness. You know how we do. It's time to level up and get to that next level. Let's get into it. I am joined by two amazing people. First, why don't you introduce yourself to the Fresh Clean Teas audience? My name is Danica Janae. I also go by Nicolina. I'm a travel and lifestyle content creator based here in Los Angeles. All right, and who do we have here? My name is Brent Toddy. I am a technology entrepreneur and I focus on helping creators build sustainable businesses uh, okay. through engagement. Oh, wow, okay. Wow, and everybody, it's me, CJ Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, obviously joined by two amazing people. So um, I'm, I'm glad that you brought up sustainable technology. Mm -hmm. um, one of the cool things that Fresh Clean Teas is doing right now is, is a new initiative to make sure that the clothing is sustainable. Mm -hmm. How important is it for you when you're wearing different clothes and like different products that you're using that it's sustainable? Is that something that you're conscious of? Yes. It is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'll say that it, it wasn't very important to me originally and, okay. and ultimately I where my first exposure came was starting to do some thrifting okay where I started to realize that there was a little bit less of a carbon footprint if you're going out and buying things that were previously purchased before um, that was really the first exposure that I had to that kind of idea and then now I'm starting to look more into like what truly is the footprint of yeah. the types of clothing that I'm making because I was cheap before. I was like okay. fast fashion, anything that was like <laughs> five, six bucks, I'm hitting H&M and right. it was, that was good enough for me, wear it a few times, throw it away. So so when you think of so when you think of sustainable fashion now, do you think, uh, is it, do you feel like it's a heftier pr price tag or is that like cheaper or is it like cost effective? Like, does, I mean like what is, how does that play a role in the in your decision making when you're like shopping for fashion, I guess? For me, I'm all about quality over quantity, so okay. I don't really care about the price. I'm looking at how long I'm going to have it for, for a few years, um, yeah. Do you, and, and, what, and how do you feel about like unisex products? So something oh, I like, love them. okay, you love them. Because yeah. like you're, you're, this is like a unisex shirt that you're wearing and you seem like you styled yourself pretty well and then obviously this. So like, what about you? Do you, unisex, men's, women, do you care? I mean, I would say primarily like if it's unisex clothing, it's going to fit both ways. Okay. Um, so I would- It's about the fit. Yeah, it's, it's all about the fit for okay. me. Um, especially with t-shirts. Like t-shirts have to, they have to be comfortable. They can't be too tight. They have to have a nice breathable material and it's got to be something that's not going to, you know, unravel after two or three washes. Right. It's something that's really important to me. Right, right. And I mean, you and I have both talked about this <laughs> and like, too, we're going to- We talk a lot about our, our shirts and the way it fits on our bodies. But with, like the long sleeve, talk about that as well. I'm the, just the long sleeve is really important. It's like right. it can't be loose after like one pull up. If you pull a long sleeve up and it's not actually gonna, gonna come <laughs> back down, it's gonna be all loose. Yes, it's not gonna happen for me. That's that's a deal breaker. I, so I mean, I, that's like a, that brings up a really good question. It's like when when uh, and I'm only asking this because you're a style icon, uh, much more than we are. Oh, like you. short sleeve shirts on guys or long sleeve shirts. Like which one do you? Which one it looks hotter? Like which ones? Oh, I love when guys wear long sleeves. Not too fitted. Not too fitted. A little loose. A little bit loose. Mm -hmm. Okay, and rolled gray. up a little. Like it's just very casual. Gray. Mm -hmm. The color gray. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you like grays and blacks. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, I primarily wear grays, blacks, and whites. Okay, but I, I like to. I, like, I feel like that's always like a common answer with guys. Yeah, for sure. But like, <laughs> I feel like there's there's definitely a time and a place for like something that's got a nice pop to it. Like, right. Like, like a mint green. You know, <laughs> yeah, like a mint green, green is like would be a great color to have like if you're wearing a bunch of other mute tones and okay. if that's like if that's going to be your pop of color like a lot of times i'll do watch or i'll do like a you know a different type of shoe right um but you can totally choose like a pop color t-shirt to set off something that would normally be a very like drab right tone. yeah i mean and we in one of our previous round tables we were talking about like how we dress and like you know what makes us feel empowered and how we how we curate those selections um, I love street style, like also doing like business casual. Uh, like, what about you? Like, what like what's your go-to outfit that makes you feel powerful? What style do you like to rock? I'm very experimental, so I don't okay. have an answer for that. But oh, I try to go for blacks and then dark, dark like dark greens, dark blues. Um, I stay away from whites, pastels. 
Is there a particular reason why? I just don't look good. Okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah, you got to rock. You got to. Hey, you got to remember everyone, everyone, everyone knows the palette. I get that. Actually, I get that. There's a color like color spectrum where you take a test and you find out what looks good for your skin tone. Wait, wait, wait. What is this? Yeah, I, um, I need to know about this. Yeah. I have no idea. I saw it on a YouTube wait. video, but I think okay. it kind of makes sense with me because you kind of know what color looks great on. I see. Doesn't. Interesting. So I think that you just know. So just yeah, know. I'm just kind of curious, like what that process would look like for me to find that out. So how do you, just, what do you do to do that? How do you? I just kind of, I mean, I have never taken a test. Okay. But I know it's out there. Uh-huh. But because I just know what looks got me and what doesn't. Okay. I, I guarantee you there's like an app out there that does <laughs> yeah. like skin tone combined Possibly. with like some sort of like yeah. AI algorithm that like pairs it with like a right. certain yeah. set of palettes. Because well, don't you notice whenever you wear a certain color, you just look a little washed out? Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah so absolutely. That's, that's, it play, that's okay. it coming into play. What about you? Like, what do you like to wear that makes you feel empowered? Uh, I mean, honestly, it's more about the fit than anything else. Okay. Like, I like to be able to move in the clothing that I wear. Like, my jeans are all stretchy. My shirts are always super comfortable. I always like to say, like, if I can't do a few squats and whatever it is that I'm wearing, like, I'm really? not going to be in a comfortable So you're, position. like, even looking for, like, how you can work out in your clothes? Absolutely, because I look at, I look wow. at movement as being something that's intertwined throughout the day. It's not something uh -huh. where it's, like, I don't put in an hour in the morning and then right. I'm done. Right. It's usually 15 minutes there, 15 minutes there. And is, that part, that is, that a, is that, like, a part of your your workout regimen? Yeah, I like, I like to, I, and it's not even necessarily a workout regimen as much as it is, is like making movement a lifestyle. And okay. I think that that's why it's, it's important to be able to figure that out. And like, the other thing that's really cool too, like if you're, if you're not feeling like you're empowered in any one particular moment, the first thing you can do is actually start moving around a little bit, right. get some blood flowing. If you're right. nervous, like start doing some jumping jacks, like something along that, those lines ultimately is going to help you feel a little bit more in control. Right. Uh, I forgot who said this, but it's like uh, motion equals emotion. Mm -hmm. um, I, I same. I do that too. Like I, if I'm feeling kind of funky, I'll do uh, jumping jacks, push-ups. Mm -hmm. But I just think that's very interesting about what you said about like wardrobe because like sometimes, you know, a brother's wearing some uh, some skinny jeans and yeah. uh, I just can't. But they're all stretchy. Oh. They're stretchy. <laughs> <laughs> they're hyper stretch skinny jeans. But something, but like, like you said, like a fit shirt, mm -hmm. you know, I already feel empowered. So it's like if I'm feeling just a little bit like, mm, okay, well, maybe a little lethargic, I'm like jumping jacks or stretching. And you know, what about you? Like, do you, do you, when you work, do you, how do you work out? Or do you work out? What's your workout routine? I I'm the laziest person ever. <laughs> really? I am incredibly lazy. I actually just recently biked from Seattle to okay. Santa Barbara yeah. with a train, with the help of But you travel a lot. But, You're very active. But, be, but with me being so lazy, I can't even do like, if you make me do 15 push-ups, I die after five. You're yeah, a, but like as you're traveling wait a around, second. I bet you're logging multiple right. miles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Good that's a different team. type of fitness. That's not. But like, it's a spectrum. But this I think. But spectrum. I think. But I think to what you said, because you know you're very active. So you saying like you saying that you're lazy like, is not true at all. I'm not gonna willingly work out. <laughs> but you. But but I think what you said, adding it to your lifestyle, mm -hmm. you're not necessarily going to the gym, but you are. I'm doing. There's a lot of motion. Else. Yes. Yeah. When I, when I used to train people, like I was like, a lot of what I would try to identify with people is like, how, what is it that you actually enjoy doing? Right. Let's figure out how to add some movement into that. Like one of my favorite uh, stories that I had with one of the guys that I used to work with uh -huh. is he just like hated working out. Like I would send him, yeah. like buy all the yes. workout equipment yes. and it was just like, like, you. like you hate working out <laughs> every time. And ultimately like I, I was like, look, like let's find you a hobby. Like, do you like golf, like swimming? What about mount climb or, uh, uh uh, mountain climbing right and he's like he's like why well, I could just like rock climb I'm like yeah he's like and now he's like an absolute savage with bouldering <laughs> and like that's his thing he's in really really good shape yeah but that's like a perfect example of like okay. one of those things where if you can figure out what it is that like actually makes you tick yeah then it doesn't necessarily feel like you're working out oh that's interesting yeah with that's the bike. With the bike. <laughs> <laughs> everything comes full circle yeah. so uh because you're both like entrepreneurial mm -hmm. uh like what would you say is the the biggest challenge of being an entrepreneur um i know that for myself um it, which is kind of interesting but i think covid19 sort of highlighted um like the loneliness factor of mm -hmm. being an entrepreneur i'm like wow like the six the highs were, were felt kind of muted because I couldn't celebrate it the same way that I normally would. Absolutely. And the lows were like, whoa, dude, I, I need to like, 
you know, <laughs> like worked out to get yeah. my mind right or something. Like it just didn't feel quite right. I can I can definitely co-sign on like the loneliness thing. It's hard to to you know you look at like you know the way that you interact with people is like a Venn diagram. Like how are you actually really crossing over with people? And a lot of the problems that you ultimately have, like other people just don't have and don't understand. So when you moan and gripe about it, they're like that doesn't. Right. That doesn't sink for me. So that's definitely one thing. I'd say the other thing too is really just like finding some sort of work-life balance. Okay. Um, it's really easy to go into these like 12, 14 hour work holes and you just don't, like you just look back up and all of a sudden like the world passed you by and yeah. it's dark again. And yeah. you're just like, so that, that happens a lot. And I think that that's something that I've really focused on, especially during COVID. Okay. It's like, there's nothing to do. So it's like either you're working or like, luckily like we have a backyard. So like I'm able to go outside, but like when I was living in LA, yeah. two bedroom apartment, like what are you going to do? Right. Um, I remember you saying so that. So figuring yeah. that out, figuring out a work-life balance, I think is something that is, it is absolutely integral. Interesting. And then what about you? What would you say is your biggest challenge? For me, it's making myself feel guilty when I'm when I'm out having fun. If I'm not being productive, I'm like, oh, I could be doing this and for work yeah. instead. And another thing is, I, I guess it connects to the loneliness factor. I don't have friends to talk about this with. A lot of my friends went to college and then they ended up working like corporate jobs. Mm -hmm. And for me to talk about what I do for a living, we just don't see eye to eye. Uh, so it can be kind of conflicting because when I'm in need of motivation and I'm in a rut, I want to talk to someone like you right. to just, I don't know, lift up my spirits. But when I talk to my, my girlfriends, they just have really nothing to tell me. Mm. So um, that's, that's my struggle with being an entrepreneur. I think that's something that a lot of entrepreneurs like that entrepreneurial lifestyle mm -hmm. of like, oh, you get to do whatever you want. You know, you're your own, your own boss. <laughs> um, it's it's this selling of a lifestyle that that also comes with a lot of like, um, you know, shitty uh, sh challenges. The <laughs> we don't want to just like just keep keep it real. Shitty challenges. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that's like some of the, I think you guys are highlighting some of the, the, those challenges. So what do you do? Like what's the number one, what's the number one thing that you like about being an entrepreneur? Freedom. Yeah. Freedom. So I will say like, <laughs> like free. I, I think what's interesting about, and like I, I think specifically with like your entrepreneurship versus like different, there's all sorts of different types, like the levels of freedom that occur like the first few businesses that I started absolutely had and that level. How many how many businesses have you have you uh, created? I think it's very like, important to know that probably because... like nine or ten at okay. this point. Okay. You just keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Well it's like you fail and you fail and you fail, but you learn and you build skill sets and, and over time like each one's more successful than the last. Yeah. Um, but there's like I, I think in terms of freedom and it was actually something that I was gonna bring up too in terms of like, you know, you, you don't have your own or you don't have a boss. Like Right. I think that that is like going to be the next level of entrepreneurship where it's like because so much of like, you know, content creators or like everyone is, is more or less treated as their own brand these days. If you treat your business as like being your own brand, you actually don't necessarily have a boss beyond just your audience. Right. The, the standard way about going about doing it, if you're going to be an entrepreneur, is like you raise money and then you have like people that have invested in your company. They ultimately become your boss. Like it's kind of like a give and a mm. take. So that's like what I feel like is almost like the old school style of entrepreneurship. The new school style is, is this idea of like building authenticity and with your existing audience and brand. Yeah. Figuring out a way to make sure that you connect with them and ultimately make, making sure that like you're maintaining that connection over time. Okay. That's how this like idea of like never have a boss, like never work a day in your life yeah. really actually becomes true because you're being your authentic huh. self. Yeah. You're doing all the things you like to do and people are actually engaged in that. Interesting. Yeah. I, and how do you feel about that? For me, I like to travel a lot for, for work. I love working with hotels and my freedom is being able to just see the world. Mm -hmm. How many people can say that they, they go to Denver for a weekend and work with a hotel and explore and then um, branch out from there? Yeah. I feel like my freedom. and. I recently had a work trip in San Luis Obispo and I brought my mom with me. Where's the freedom in bringing your family with you when you go to work? So I, I love that part. You know, because this is Fresh Clean Tea's round table, mm -hmm. uh, we got to get into some like fashion tips. Yeah. Um, so I'm interested to, to get some like fashion insights, some like do's and don'ts of fashion. Mm. This and and we're so blessed to finally have like a woman's perspective on this. I'm taking notes finally. right now. I'm taking notes because I get, <laughs> I, I get crucified for this all the time. So, what would you say is a fashion fupa, like a don't, when it comes to fashion? 
For guys or for girls or both? Just both. Both. Um, oh, we're gonna get into it. Yeah. You too. Mm. Us too. So we're gonna talk some shit. <laughs> Yes, yes. Yeah. I don't know what the shoe is called, but it looks like this. <laughs> yeah. Like duck duck feet toes. I oh. think that's so ugly. Oh, like actually, the, the boots? It's a boot or a heel and it separates your toe thumb yeah, from yeah. the rest of your Yes. And I'm like, what the You yeah, know what? I, I don't I, I used to work out in those all the time. <laughs> I co-sign on what she's yeah. saying. Hey, I will, I'm never going to defend that they don't look goofy, but I will say that they're very comfortable, and they also fit really well in a workout bag because they go absolutely flat. I mean... Fashionable? No. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But comfortable. Comfortable. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I co-sign on that. Yeah. And then, and then what we... What would well, I, I, think, I think I just spilled the beans and I'm probably not the, the right source <laughs> on all of this, but what I will say, like, fashion dues for guys, I think is just, like knowing what your style is like knowing what you feel comfortable in um and i think finding like so like it's, so for you it's like it's it like I've, it seems like comfortability is a common theme with you comfortability and okay. like you have to have a little bit of flair like okay. something that like that you're proud of like okay. i'm super proud of like i love this watch like i got it for right. my 30th birthday like, you're big you're a big accessory person i am a big accessory person would you say what would you say is like the number one style accessory that like every person should have like three nice watches. Okay. I think you don't need any more than three. Okay. Uh, I think you need like different a, colors or yeah, just yeah. So something. like I, I would say that you would want something. You would also want to be able to swap out the bands too, so that they can actually match your outfit. Ooh, That's another yeah. thing that I feel like a lot of people don't do. Um, but yeah, finding like a nice like dress watch, like having something nice that's got like a little leather band on it too. Yeah. yeah. Different color faces, and then I'd say like a kind of more like a tactical military watch of sorts. Okay. Um, that's a little bit more rugged that you could take out if you're like yeah. traveling around. Wow. What's a great girls watch? You think so? Like the tactical watch? No. What What's a great girl's watch? Oh. Because I don't, I don't. You don't have. Let I me. Mean, I, I would think that you'd be able to answer that for us. Mm -mm. Yeah. I don't wear watches at all. Do you? Do you like accessories? I like accessories, but what, very minimal. Very minimal. Mm -hmm. So, like, what would you say is the number one accessory you'd use? For me, it's a necklace, but okay. a cute little dainty one. A dainty one. You like dainty necklaces? Mm -hmm. Okay. I actually personally love it when girls wear watches. Yeah? Especially if it's like something where it's so like... You, you, yeah. You obviously have the answer I've, to this. I've got a, I've got a thing for watches. Give me that right now. So... And like, I don't love... I don't love like the tiny little ones like that, but like... So like... Kind of like the unisex style, I think works really okay. well. I don't okay. think that you need to go like the super tiny style of watch. I think that like something that like matches and is like unique. I think mm -hmm. that that's like, especially if you're gonna spend you know a good chunk of change on an, on a watch, like yeah. you got to find something that matches your personality. There's got to be like something unique about it. Okay. Um, and I also think that like the reason why watches are a really interesting way to like complement like a really like nice fitting T-shirt too is like you can make it your own the same way that right. like you can find a T-shirt that like fits you. Same thing with an accessory. It's like it's kind of your piece. It's like you add your little right. your tweak on it, and it becomes yours. And and we, and, we, and I'm very, I'm just kind of curious uh, because obviously like accessories, but also like you know we kind of touched on um, you know how you incorporate working out into your active lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, like, what do you do mentally to like keep yourself in check? Um, I guess like to, to feel empowered. Like, what what do you do to make you feel very confident? Um, uh, like, what's the number one thing that you do, and the and that that number one tip that you would give to someone else as well? I love to talk to myself in the mirror. Okay, it's just so fun. Like actually. full on conversations. Yeah, okay. like I'll I'll talk to myself in my head and then say it out loud, like replying to myself. Okay. And last night, I my aunt was visiting, <laughs> and I'm just talking to myself and looking at myself, and she's walking past my room, and well, I said, "I bet the fuck you do." And I'm myself, <laughs> and she's like. What? But I like to give myself pep talks okay. because I, I've been in a rut these last few weeks and just talking to myself, it was hyping me up. I right. love to be my own hype man. So okay. that empowers me. For me, it's all about schedule. I, for, it's like if I can own my own schedule, I know exactly when I'm supposed to be doing certain things. So like that's, it's, it starts with when you go to bed, your nighttime routine, the things you can do to make sure that you're maximizing sleep. I wake up pretty early in the morning, usually like 5.30 or 6.00. I have my like set things. I like make sure that I step outside the first 15 minutes of the day. Okay. So like 
my feet hit the floor, I drink a bottle of water and I just get outside. Interesting. Whatever happens after that's like yeah. fine, but it's like as long as I follow that general cadence that works for me. The other thing that I would recommend doing for people too is especially if you find like you're in a creative rut or you're getting distracted is finding ways to block off all the distraction that you have and set a specific, like I have a timer that I have on my phone or I'll do it on my watch and I know exactly how long I'm working on one task. Okay. No notifications, Interesting. nothing. Okay. So this idea of like no nonsense time blocking mm -hmm. with a specific focus is right. something that makes me feel like I'm in control of my day because it doesn't have to be all day. But if I get a few of those in a row, a few uh -huh. 20 minute blocks here or there, yeah. then I'm on a roll. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, same. I mean, I think we, and we've discussed this before I think so. about time choking and how we really like doing that. Um, that's so interesting. I, I feel like for, for me, it's, I do, I do both. So I do speaking to myself in the mirror and I also do time chunking. And, um, I found that like when I'm reading books, um, that always makes me feel extremely confident mm -hmm. and happy. Like yes. it doesn't matter what type. So like, yeah. what, what, what do you guys read a lot? I do. Yeah. yeah. My goal this year is to read one book a month. Okay. So I read Good Matthew goal. McConaughey's The Green Light. Okay. And then I read an, a book about manifesting. And then right now I'm reading a few books. Really? Yes. So one of my favorite tips, and this is actually something that like whenever anyone comes to me and asks me like, you know, what's something that you can like do to help me start reading more regularly. Yeah. Um, I always try to tell them to, to not necessarily worry so much about how many pages you're going to read or how long you're supposed to be reading. But you really should be reading until you come across something profound. That's like the way that I tend to read is that like in the morning I'll crack open, when I say crack open, I turn my Kindle on, but I turn my Kindle on and yeah. I read up to a point where there's something that really is going to make an impact and that's like how I, I kick off my day where it's like a certain passage, maybe a line, maybe a certain thought is going to be relevant to whatever it is that I'm working on that day. And at that point I come back and return to it from time to time throughout the day to see, am I actually like living this particular passage? Is this actually relevant to what I'm doing? Interesting. Uh, I mean, how many, how many books do you read at once? Like three or four okay. usually. And, and that's same, like, same with you, right? Yeah. It's like well, fiction and nonfiction, some business okay. books. Like I'm kind of all over the place and that's like, that's why I can jump around. Mm. Um, where yeah, I could be re and like, I also often don't finish books too. Yeah. Like I'll just, it won't be serving me anymore. And I'm like, I don't need to waste any more time on this. I'm good. Yeah. Um, so like I'll jump around from chapter to chapter and if it's not doing it for me, like that's it. Interesting. I, and then you, you travel a lot. Mm -hmm. So do you, how do you style yourself? Because I know that you're very fashion conscious and you're very intentional about what you wear. Mm -hmm. So like, how do you pick a wardrobe when you're traveling a lot? I think that's like one of the, the for me, I'm like a, as a digital nomad, it's like I, I pack uh, a couple of shirts, um, a business jacket mm -hmm. and a street jacket mm -hmm. and then uh, dress shoes, sneakers, and that's it. Like, it must I'm be done. so nice to be a guy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's but, exactly but, what I packed. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's super simple. But so for you, so like, what do you what do you typically wear? For me, or, or choosing, um, how do you choose your? I, I go on Pinterest and I look at okay. outfits, and then I also I'm very grateful to have friends from different parts of the country. So when they come visit, I analyze their style. Really? And then when I go to like, let's say my friend from Seattle is visiting mm -hmm. from uh, Seattle, mm -hmm. and I'm looking at his style, and I'm like, okay, so when I go to Seattle, I'm gonna like emulate that. Which I do. But how do you know if the style is on point or not? I mean, I know what's like, what bad. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> well, and when, yeah, you, when you go and travel, do you, and like, <laughs> is your wardrobe, do you pick and choose things from like all the places you travel? Like, are there certain pieces that remind you of spots that you went to? Yes. Oh, wow. I can yes. imagine. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, I never even thought of it like that. That's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. And it's so weird how in the U.S. alone, there's just different styles in different cities within a a state. It's so yeah. nice to look at that. I'm like, oh, someone from like LA dresses so different from someone from Santa Barbara. Really? Like, yeah. what's the, what's the big difference? LA, we're think? all about street style and looking okay. so polished, prim and proper. And over there, okay. it's like a nice sundress and some Burks. Interesting. Mm -hmm. What would you say is like the biggest like style like like the biggest like because you travel so much like what's a place that like stuck out to you like fashion wise that you're like wow this this was this Swanky. place. Where? Swanky. Uh, Seattle. Seattle? Seattle has the really? best style ever. I thought you would say something like a New York or a London or something, or a Paris, yeah. or, uh, or South Korea. Yeah. They well, jam I, in I, South Korea, I feel bro. like I feel like Seattle would have a lot of opportunities to have really unique style. One, just because like there's a very eclectic culture out there. Right. But two, like, it's cold, so you can layer. 
Mm -hmm. So you can do like, you can have like, you know, some sort of like, you know, band tee or something underneath and then you've got like, you know, a button down and then you have like a shawl uh, yeah, over it true. on top of that. It's true. Yeah, and they're all about their sneakers. So everyone looks so good with their really cool, uh, like trendy sneakers. How do you keep wow. sneakers trendy and cool when it rains all the time? They, they wear they like bags yeah. over they their like sneakers. Like, <laughs> my mind is being blown right now. They I'm, uh, spray something to make it waterproof. Huh. So, you know, that does actually make a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. Cause uh, it's like Nike's in Oregon. That's yes, true. Yeah. 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 So uh, it they, they had to figure this out. They, yeah. Somebody in the Northwest, they're like, we know how, we know how to take care of our sneakers. Mm -hmm. So what, what do you feel like goes well with like a, a shirt, like uh, like as far as um, uh, bottoms are concerned? Jeans, pants, I'm shorts? I'm pretty much always, it's very rare, like if I'm wearing shorts, it means I'm going to the beach. Okay. Um, or I'm working out. Um, <laughs> You're but, just intentional with everything that you do. Yeah. Okay. But like with, with like a fresh like clean tee, like I would absolutely go with like a nice pair of like fitted, like tapered jeans, maybe some like nice Chelsea boots. Okay. Um, and then if it's like a little bit more casual, then it's like probably some like, some like well-fitted khakis and like some Vans. Interesting. That's pretty much all you'll ever catch me in. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've been a lot, a lot of times when I'm like wearing something like this, I don't even wear jeans at, that much mm -hmm. anymore. It's like fitted pants. Um, yeah, that's it, actually. You know, and sweats. I'm just glad that joggers are, like, yeah, cool now. That's what like, I mean. Jogger, yeah. Like, you can wear, like, stretchy joggers, again, going back to the comfort yeah. thing, and get away with it, and it's, like, it can be intentional, and you're not just wearing the same thing that you got out of bed in. All right. <laughs> well, any last, any, like, I would say, what's your last bit of advice that you'd like to give before we close things down? Number one tip you would give to somebody? I would start, I would say lead with passion. Um, you have to find what makes you tick. You have to find what ultimately, like when you wake up in the morning, what's the first thing that you think about? If that's not driving you to make the next step and the next step after that, the likelihood that you're going to be happy in you know a few years is pretty low. So if you can find whatever that is, and like I always, I always try to tell people too, I'm like, you don't have to be right. You can just be pursuing a passion. If it doesn't work out, that's fine. You're still yeah, making strides. Absolutely. So pursue passion, make sure that that's it, the core of whatever it is you're doing and you should be happy. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. What about you? For me, I, I look up to Ben Baller a lot. And okay. something that he says that has always stuck in my head was, this is not your practice life. Mm. So make every day just super meaningful. Do something that'll get you closer to your goal or just do something that you're super passionate about. So for me, it's like every day has to mean something. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I think for me, guys, um, not ending days with failure. Um, I always want to make sure I get a win before I, I go to sleep, before I rest my head. How do you do that? Yeah. How do I do that? Um, it, anything, any, if it's personal, mm -hmm. big, small, I just say to myself, you know, wh what did you do today that got you closer to that level of success and happiness that you're, that you're aiming for? Like, did you accomplish a goal? Did you accomplish a, did you, did you accomplish a challenge? Mm -hmm. And I want to make sure that when I go to bed, mm -hmm. Something has been accomplished. Something is, is, even if it's an incremental step, is moving forward in the right way. You got to celebrate the little wins. Absolutely. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Another amazing episode of Fresh Clean Teas, The Roundtable. Fresh Clean Teas, sustainable clothing. Make sure to visit www.freshcleanteas.com. I'd like to thank my guests so much for joining me. You guys are amazing. It's our pleasure. Love you guys. And as always, everybody, make sure to stay empowered. Keep your head up, keep leveling up. You know, we're all at her trying to do the same thing and I will talk to you soon.